Have you ever had a problem sneak up on you? For a lot of us, that problem has been debt. What started out as a seemingly small amount quickly transformed into a monster behind our backs. And the reason that this happens is because of a force called compound interest. But what exactly is compound interest? And how does it actually work? And can this force work for us instead of against us? These are all great questions to ask. But first, I would ask, what does the most powerful force in the financial world have in common with this guy? Well, if we respect this force, understand it, and create a nice environment for it to reside in, it can be our best friend. But if we neglect it or allow it to get the better of ourselves, well, it can be a bit of a nightmare. Of course, I'm talking about a force in the financial world called interest. Now, what exactly is interest? Depending on who you ask, the word interest can be applied to a variety of different things. Is it a force in nature like the mechanism that causes leaves to change colors as the seasons turn? Or maybe it's more like the gravitational warping of space-time that causes this piece of wood to fall from my hand. In reality, it's neither of these things. Interest in the financial world is not like a force in the natural world. It's actually something that we humans have come up with. Specifically, interest is just a term we use to describe a mathematical relationship that occurs when certain things happen involving money. The most common example of this has to do with lending and borrowing money. Hey. Oh, you're here? Okay. Hey. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Wanna stop and get some coffees? Yeah, sure. That sounds good. Uh, I forgot my wallet though. <laughs> oh. Well, I can lend you some money. What kind of APR are we talking? 10%. 10%? That's robbery. Well, I'm assessing the rate based on certain criteria, like the dollar value borrowed. It's less than $5. Yes, but I also need to take into consideration things like the length of time it's gonna be borrowed and the likelihood that you're gonna pay me back. Just get out of my car. Obviously, I'm not that terrible of a friend, but the concept of interest is most commonly applied between two parties. One party is looking to lend money where the other party is looking to borrow money. However, the lender is actually taking on a risk while loaning out their money. And that's because they won't be able to use their money for the period that the money is being loaned out. And on top of that, they're also taking an additional risk because the money might not actually get paid back to them. So to compensate for this risk they're taking, what the lender will want is they'll want all of the initial money to be paid back in full, but plus an amount on top of that. And this is the interest. Now the reason I compared interest to my loyal friend Mojo earlier was because interest can be both the best thing in the world as well as a painful thorn in your side. And that's depending on how you use it. You see, interest can work for you in the form of investments or against you in the form of debt. When you invest your money, generally speaking, you should end up with more money than you initially started with. So you would earn a return on your investment or an ROI as the suit folk like to call it. On the other hand, if you have debt, that debt will most likely have an interest rate applied to it to compensate the lender for their risk for loaning you out the money. And this interest rate is most commonly expressed as an annual percentage rate, or APR, like my friend Dylan inquired about. What kind of APR are we talking? Interest acts on both debt and investments in the same way. It increases them. So this is good if you have investments, but is bad if you have debt and it's actually an exponential relationship. What do I mean by that? It turns out that there's actually two forms of interest that we'll encounter in our lives. Simple interest and compound interest. Let's talk about simple interest first. 
So basically, simple interest is just a plain vanilla situation where interest occurs over one single time period. Let's say for example that I loaned Dylan $5 for the coffee at an APR of 10%. This means that he would owe 10% of $5 after one year's time, which would be 50 cents, an amount really worthy of jeopardizing a friendship. And that's simple interest in a nutshell, just interest applied over one single time period. But what about interest over more than one single time period? Buckle up, cause we're going to compound town. Compound interest is where things start to get really interesting. So let's return to our earlier example and say that Dill didn't pay back the loan after year one. So after year one, he's looking at about $5.50 owed total because of the 50 cents of interest that accrued over the year. Now what happens if he didn't pay back the loan for a second year? Well now we apply that same rate of 10% to his new amount that he owes of $5.50 which means he now owes a grand total of an additional 55 cents on that loan. Crazy, right? His interest amount actually increased. Well, maybe it actually doesn't seem that crazy when we're talking just 55 cents. Let's talk some bigger numbers. Imagine instead that Dylan owed $10,000 at the same interest rate of 10%. We know that after year one, his amount owed would be 10% of $10,000, which is $1,000 in interest. And we know that in the second year, this amount should increase because we take the initial $10,000, we add the interest to it, which means he owes a total of $11,000, and then we apply the interest rate again to that new total of $11,000. This means that his new amount of interest owed in year two will be $1,100, which is $100 more than the previous year. Will this amount keep increasing by $100? Actually, no, this amount's going to increase exponentially. Let's plot this out 10 years into the future to see. So in year one, we've got a loan of $10,000. 10 years down the line, his total amount of money owed would actually be $25,937. Jeez, now what about 30 years into the future? Check this out. The amount of money that he would owe off an initial loan of just $10,000 would be $174,944. Now how the heck do we get from just $10,000 to over 10 times that amount? Compound interest, baby. Compound interest. And here's what I want you guys to really understand, so please listen up. Yes, this force of compound interest definitely applies to loans and other debt obligations, but it also applies to investments, which means this $174,000 can be yours if you harness the power of compound interest through making intelligent investments. I'm really done with this. Let's get this off of me. Ah, oh, that's much better. So ultimately, our goal is to allow the force of compound interest to work for us and not against us. And that means getting ourselves to a position where we are debt free and have investments generating interest for us. Then all we have to do is just sit back and with some patience and discipline, reap the rewards.